Hello all, Sunshine Beings, and welcome to Transmissions Alt Mode, where we talk about all news, comics, and media related to the... On this episode of Transmissions Alt Mode, we review another classic G1 Season 1 episode featuring Skyfire, new Transformers trading cards featuring art from some of our favorite comics artists, and why was hashtag Megatron trending on Twitter? Today is Friday, June 21st, 2019, and this is episode 134 of Transmissions Alt Mode. Welcome to Transmissions Alt Mode. The podcast that can't believe 35 years of Transformers history can be undone by somebody commandeering the name Megatron. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team. Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, how you doing? And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. Hey, let's talk Transformers. All right. Uh, as always, we start off by thanking our Donatrions, those lovely people who give us money on patreon and paypal you help us keep the show going so thank you for supporting us uh as part of your uh perks for your monthly membership you are all automatically entered into the toy hacks monthly giveaway contest where we give away a ten dollar gift code from toy hacks and thank you to toyhacks.com for supporting that uh, this week we had our drawing on on the Wednesday Toy Show, so listen to Transmissions number 334, and uh, we will congratulate our winner, Jonesy. Thank you, Donatrion Jonesy, for supporting us, and enjoy that $10 gift code. Uh, also, uh, again, we mentioned in the Toy Show, we are putting up a survey to get uh, get uh listener feedback on shirts that we are trying to bring to tfcon toronto and tfcon dc so if you are planning to go to tfcon toronto and want a transmissions shirt uh take our survey and let us know what you're interested in that'll help us decide what to bring uh you just go to bit.ly slash tm shirts 2019 and help us take that survey. And this is the last day for the survey. So Friday, June 21st, that's the last day. Help us out to take the survey. Uh, if you can't get to TFCon, you can still get a Transmissions shirt. Just go to transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. And that's where you can find uh, all our shirt designs. And we've got a bunch of new ones up there. So check them out. Also, uh, visit our friend of the show, K-Girl, her tea public store. She's got some of her own uh, Transformers-themed shirts. Just go to tpublic.com slash user slash superstar K and support her as well. Let's get into some comics news. All right, uh, we mentioned this last week, but we, we weren't sure since we didn't get the comic in our hands, but now we can confirm that all of the uh, Transformers number seven and eight will have the trading card game booster packs in them. Transformers trading card game booster packs. So, Transformers number seven came out last week. So, hopefully, you got your copy and got your booster pack. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there are still copies on the shelves if you want to pick that up. And next week, when Transformers number eight comes out, that will also be packed in with a uh, trading card game booster pack. Thanks to the folks at IDW for getting us free Transformers cards with the uh, purchase of the comic. So that's good news. Now the bad news. We have IDW has posted their uh, financials uh, for, uh, I believe this was uh, first quarter or second quarter of 2019. And it's not great. Uh, they lost $3.7 million dollars. 1.6 of which was from their publishing. So not great. Uh, this is right after they just got a big infusion of, of cash to support their further ventures. Uh, another thing that's troubling is that uh, in uh, this uh, discussion about the their financials, there was no mention of that show, Winona Earp. That's their, uh, you know, their, I guess their flagship uh tv show that they're producing so might be the end for winona earp if uh for all the fans out there who are, who are looking forward to that but she might be heading out to the sunset 
Uh, also, I mean, this, this, I mean, I, I'm not going to say the publishing is in trouble, but, you know, Transformers Comics, uh, they're from IDW Publishing, losing $1.6 million in the quarter. That's, that's not good news. So anytime the comics business has taken a loss, look for titles to get cut. So let's specify it's not only Transformers Comics that are causing this. No, I mean, no, it's not. Definitely not. I mean, Transformers, com- they, they, there's only one comic series, Transformers comics out right now. So they've got a whole bunch of comics that are losing money. It's not good news. So hopefully they can rebound uh, next quarter. All they need is a little energy on and a lot of luck. I gotta say, when any company, when you see that, when you start seeing talent, just, you know, like, you know, abandoned ship the way that it has at IDW. And I mean, it's not just with the news from Tom B. Long last week, but also, you know, the stuff we've seen with IDW over the last six months that it doesn't look great. So yeah, the, the writing's on the wall for, for IDW and they need, they need something quick to, to kind of bring this back. I mean, I'm surprised that, Maybe that there hasn't been enough time yet, but those Marvel books that they're doing, both Star Wars Adventures and they're doing like some an Avengers book, Spider Man book. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised that those aren't boosting the numbers significantly. But like I said, might not be enough time yet. I, I bet that the they've had to pay a significant amount of royalty to Marvel to use the characters, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, still, it should boost their sales numbers mm-hmm. in, in some, some way it also could be kind of in, increasing a, a relationship with Marvel could lead to maybe down the road, the publishing division being sold to Marvel. Yeah. Many of the people have history there, particularly John Barber has worked with Marvel and it doesn't look good, but you know, I, I'm convinced that there's going to be a Transformers comic regardless, even if IDW goes down, someone else is going to pick it up. Mm hmm. Yeah, I guess the other thing is there. I guess the for this V Wars show is going to Netflix, mm-hmm. so they're hoping to recoup some uh, some revenue from that. I mean, that's just a one shot, right? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's a series or what. No, I know it's a one shot. I picked it up. No, but I mean the the show on Netflix. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, no, I was talking about the book. Uh, but they've also got Lock and Key. They're also do that's going to be a Netflix show as well. So yeah, and that that has a lot of buzz around it because Joe Hill, who works on the book and created it, is um oh great Stephen King's son Rainbow Stephen King's son yeah that brings its own audience in. Mm-hmm. All right, well we wish IDW well because <laughs> we like we like uh, the folks uh, working at IDW well <laughs> the ones that are still there and. Uh, we like, uh, you know, we like having more Transformers comics. So fingers crossed for those guys. All right. Uh, let's move on to our review for this week. This week we are comicless. So we are going back to the G1 series. Um, the last time we did the first Jetfire episode, Fire in the Sky, and we thought maybe we'll continue and do the next Jetfire episode, Fire on the Mountain. So uh, this was episode nine of season one of Transformers. It aired December 22nd, 1984, and uh, written by Douglas Booth. Yeah, it starts off uh, with Trailbreaker and Braun patrolling a refinery while two familiar-looking jets fly overhead. It turns out that Thundercracker and Starscream were at the same refinery looking to steal some steel. That, that was a bad sentence. <laughs> uh, the Decepticons got away with some substandard steel, and they kept the Autobots from following by destroying the refinery and you know leaving the Autobots to trapped and, and dealing with the people. Uh, but when they report back to Optimus Prime, they're all decep- they're all you know confused about why the Decepticons are looking for the steel. So they launch their Sky Spy to to see if there's any. Decepticon activity on Earth, and why don't they just do that all the time? I mean, that that would seems like that would make a lot of sense. They find in uh, Peru, I believe it was Peru, in like an Inca temp- temple, they found the Decepticons there. Uh, the Decepticons have followed an Incan legend that 
says there's a um, a crystal of power inside this particular pyramid. Uh, apparently, it goes to a shaft that goes all the way to the Earth's core. So Megatron takes the weapon and tests it in in this frame that they've made from that steel that, that Starscream and Thundercracker stole. And it is a powerful weapon, but it completely destroys the, the metal frame. Right. Megatron leaves Skywarp in, in command while you know to watch Thundercracker and Starscream, while he go he goes off with Soundwave and some other Decepticons to get some better metal that he he thinks is nearby. So nearby, the 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 locals are going crazy with the sudden blast that they saw from the top of the temple, and they're 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 freaking out. Um, and near and at the same time. Sideswipe and Wheeljack are jackhammering through the, the ice to try to bring back Skyfire. Again, why they didn't just do that immediately, I don't know. But Skyfire doesn't really need any time to get up to speed. He's just ready to go. And they pick up Braun and Wheeljacker and Braun and Wheel Charger, or Wind Charger, and go down to the, um, the Andes Mountains. He drops them off, and they, they fight Soundwave and Reflector. And Skyfire goes to to check out the energy readings on the temple, and Megatron shows up to the the fight with Soundwave and Reflector. And Braun he he thinks he can hold his own, but realizes that he's in over his head. He and um, Wind Charger escape via Skyfire and go back to get some help. So uh, later on. Uh, Autobots come back. The Decepticons have their their fully successful frame with with this metal that Megatron found, and Autobots attack or you know, they attack the Decepticons. But for some reason, this this blast that was incredibly powerful at the very beginning, it's not quite as powerful because it seems to hit some Autobots and not really significant damage. In one scene, Braun does steal Megatron's fusion cannon and gets off a blast at Megatron, who is not se- severely injured, uh, but Laserbeak grabs it and takes it back to Megatron. Uh, in the end, the, the, the show ends with um, the Autobots destroying the, the weapon. Typical thing. The Decepticons run away, and the crystal's destroyed. So Wheeljack has another invention that he hopes will work to cap the, the, where the, the shaft going to the core. And it, in the end, one of the locals goes with Spike inside Bumblebee to introduce Bumblebee to her car, who she thinks will be a a nice, um, oh, it's her brother's car, Juanita, who will be a nice match for Bumblebee. Kind of skipped around at the end, but it was a fun episode. Um, a, a lot of kind of character work on, like, Braun and Wind Charger. I hadn't seen this sh- this episode in years, and I couldn't remember much of anything about Wind Charger from the cartoon. And I forgot that he was even in significant episodes. So it, it was really good. Skyfire was just kind of immediately back and no like, oh, I'm, I need to power up or anything. He was just ready to go. But um, it, it was, I think it was a fun episode. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, for me, this is, this definitely hits the nostalgia, uh, you know, this nostalgia feels Although if I look at it just as a kind of uh, as a um, twenty nineteen sensibilities, it it is a little rough. I mm-hmm. mean the whole the whole thing with with Skyfire. I mean I wasn't here for you guys reviewing uh, Fire in the Sky, but I but it's burned into my brain that ending shot of Fire in the Sky when they have the solemn memorial for Jet or for Skyfire and like we shall yeah. remember Skyfire. We shall remember. And then, and then this is two episodes later. Yeah. And they're like, okay, you're you're free now. Now go help. Now go ferry everyone down to the Andes. We need a, we need a sky bus, so that's why we dug you up. <laughs> also, like Spike repairing Skyfire was Skyfire's got like one single point of failure, I guess, in his chest there where he got shot, and then just put the cat back on, and he's fine. Yeah, this was very much uh, just leave your brain at the door. For some yeah. of these details, but I did like I did like the I, I don't think they ever named the the um I guess Peruvian girl who oh, like is she, the she was um Luisa okay, 
But I did like how she's, you know, her her elders are like, oh, it's evil. The evil gods have returned. He's like, no, it's, you know, someone's just discovered the ancient artifact. So she's, you know, she's a, she's an 80s kid. She's, you know, she's, yeah. she, well, she, she was understands. like the ancient gods are dead. <laughs> <Something different. laughs> yeah. And I did like the, the whole interplay between the Seekers, like Thundercracker, Starscream, and Skywarp getting a little characterization. That was nice. Thundercracker's tech spec about being, you know, a quote-unquote traitor to the Decepticons kind of plays mm-hmm. in here, where he's kind of like just trying to play them off against each other. I thought that was... that. And at the end nice. where they're flying away, Starscream's complaining about a headache. I think it was Starscream, where when yeah. Thundercracker flew by it, with his like thundering sound. Yeah. That was from the text back too. Yeah, so so nice nice little character moments that we do, we don't get a lot of characterization from Skywarp and Thundercracker throughout the series. So this episode showcased them a little bit. And you're right about Windcharger and Brawn getting a little bit. And of course, you know this is way before the movie, but Brawn does take a fusion cannon right to the chest, and nothing happens. Uh, mm-hmm. It was it was a lot different in, in the '86 movie, but but yeah, fun episode. Yeah, cool, uh, Daryl. What about you? Skyfire was my guy. I I like this episode. I mean, I'm watching it again uh, as an adult. Right off the bat, you see Trailbreaker colored like Ironhide. Yeah. Um, At one point when Skyfire was shot and he was lifeless body, they're carrying him in and he's colored like Skywarp. You're like, okay, this is an 80s cartoon. There's going to be coloration mistakes, and that's something that they were famous for. Um, I I get the... uh, the, the plot of the week kind of thing about it. That was what the show was about. The part that kind of got me here while I was watching it again was they removed this crystal from inside the temple. Mm-hmm. But we, they put Wheeljack's invention on the top of the temple. Yeah, it just gives them enough time to get away before the whole thing blows up. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, the basically, the this energy is, is just exposed on the inside of the temple it's not it's just not coming outside but it's it's just yeah. filling the inside of the temple so no one can ever go back in like this is a terrible invention wheeljack <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean yeah they he, they really should have had the autobots inside um, yeah but then they couldn't have done the little spotlight thing i, I also like how his "Quote unquote invention is a manhole cover, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or how they're unsure that it's going to work. They're like almost fifty fifty. But let's have the two humans stand right next to it while we put it on. <laughs> but th- there was a, a nice kind of carryover from the previous episode, which was SOS Dinobots, where he's like talking about how his mentions usually work. Mm. You know, kind of, you know, the Dinobots were kind of his invention, that kind of haywire. haywire. Right. Well, I'm uh, I'm kind of thinking about this thing as one of the first t- iterations where the episodes were, were uh, released in the wrong order. So I kind of think that Fire in the Sky was supposed to be released, or sorry, Fire on the Mountain was supposed to be released right after Fire in the Sky. And then SOS Dinobots would have come after that, which, I mean, would have still played into the connection that yeah. you saw, but would have they would have dug up Skyfire immediately after he crashed, right, in the next yeah. episode. And that, and that does happen consistently through the, the series, as you do see that the release, episode, the release date uh, of episodes has changed. One comes out um, earlier than the next one, so... Yeah, it, it would make sense if they did that, and um, you know, it might be better watching it in that order. Yeah, I mean, I, I I find the episode itself to be fine. It's there's nothing particularly wrong with it. The uh, the Peruvian girl is a fairly strong character mm-hmm. for the '80s. You know, I, I expected them to give her a very a very damsel in distress kind of thing, but she's she's pretty strong willed. You know, the accents that they give her is, are are pretty. They're they're pretty bad. All in all, it's a, it's just a cartoon, so who cares? It's not as bad of a stereotype as the whole car bombia. Stuff. Yeah, that's that's terrible. The episode was good. There's tons of fighting in this thing, absolutely tons, yeah. and they're just blasting at each other, never hitting anybody except Megatron does hit them a couple times, but like you said, it they don't doesn't do any harm. I like it. It's fun. They're they're fun episodes to watch. 
I, I did like Braun getting Megatron's fusion cannon and, sh- and shooting him, shooting it back at him, mm-hmm. <laughs> and Megatron yeah. getting pissed off about that. <laughs> you know, the DF Wiki says that if you look at it, Braun actually dodges the shots from Megatron, and it's actually Soundwave that hits him. Oh, so mm, okay, maybe that plays into the whole movie thing. I don't know. Have to see. Uh, this this was a fun episode. Um, I like to keep doing these because when I'm watching these, I'm actually watching them with my kid, which is even more fun kind of watching it through his eyes because he's entranced. You know, after this, we actually did watch SOS Dinobots because I figured he would enjoy a Dinobot episode. And I've been telling him how, like, every time Megatron stubs his toe, Starscream tries to take over, and then we see it in that episode, and he just starts cracking up. So that was great. Anyway, maybe next time we'll do that, or um, I don't know how many other Jetfire... Kind of well, he's out of the episodes. ice now. He's a regular. Yeah. He's the uh, Autobot taxi. <laughs> Until the lawyers discontinue his toy, he's around for a little yeah. while. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, paint him yellow and call him a bus. All right. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll just keep doing these types of things or other series when um, when there, there's no comic. So uh, send us feedback on what you would like us to review and we'll take into consideration. Maybe we can do some animated or. Um, another Beast Wars show or something, just let us know. That is our review. All right, uh, and let's move on to some Transformers media news. All right, well, uh, this topic was saved from last week, and it's a Transformers trading card game um, one, and they have announced organized play, um, and it introduced... War for Cybertron Siege as the next name um, for the sets. So we've got uh, th- now this. This was a like I said a, a topic from last week, and this past weekend we did have some tournaments going on that uh, did show uh, the TCG getting played, and prizes of War for Cybertron Siege were getting handed out. That's pretty cool, so take a look at that. We do have Organized Play 101 as a link you can check out. A lot of the new cards are are not reused art. They are uh, original pieces of art for the cards, um, and you can take a look at some of them here. We've got uh, Squish Them Bugs by Sarah Peter Duroche and Josh Burcham. Uh, we've got Frag Toss and Point Defense System. Art and Colors by Josh Perez. Uh, we've got Rock Toss by Casey Collar and Josh Bertram. And we've got Infiltrate by Casey Collar and Josh Perez. So there's uh, there's lots of really cool cards uh, coming. Lots of really great art. So you can take a look at that there. It was really cool. That's it for Media News. All right. Uh, and let's move on to some transforming pop culture. So uh, a couple of interesting bits. Uh, these are a little bit odds and ends uh, kind of threw in. One was, uh, I guess, in, in Japan, you can become an expert in Transformers. They, uh, so the there is going to uh, be the Japanese website Kente Yukitsuki is known for offering tests and certifications for lots of different uh, subjects and topics in Japan. And they are putting out an official Transformers Kentai. So that's a proficiency test. So you can get your certification in Transformers in Japan. And the first test will be February 16th, 2020. So just got to learn Japanese uh, and probably want to, you probably want to bone up on all the Japanese Transformers media as well. And uh, they do have a practice test. Yes, they do have a practice test. It's all in Japanese, though. So, well, but if you go to it in Google Chrome, it'll transfer, uh, translate. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I tried that. The translation's not super accurate. It's it's okay, yeah. but <laughs> first one. Which of the following is the General Commander Convoy appearing in the first anime battle super robot creatures transformer? Okay, <laughs> but still, it's obvious that's Megatron. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> 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 Jeremy fails. <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah, so um, I guess all our Japanese listeners who listen to the podcast, you can check that out. 
I am I I am doing Japan Japanese on Duolingo uh, on the Duolingo app, but I am not at the advanced level yet where I can actually read Japanese. So this pro this is probably not uh <laughs> not in my uh, expertise here. But if you're fluent in Japanese, you've probably got a shot, and and you like Transformers, of course. Next, we've got uh, a Transformers Ghostbusters shirt. So. We've got an Ectotron shirt that is out in uh, GameStop. So you can pick this up. Uh, you can order it online. And it's supposed to be out uh, June 20th, which would be yesterday as of this this podcast going up. So should already be out in stores. So uh, this is celebrating, the, I guess, both the, um, the Ghostbusters and the Transformers 35th anniversary. So... I don't know who did the art for this. Uh, this maybe it's. I guess it's the like. Is it Dan Schoening who is the artist on the? Maybe the the Ghostbusters look like they're kind of animated comic appearance. Yeah, and Ectotron looks. He looks different from what we've seen in the preview art for the comic. Like his face is different. And we're still waiting for the it to show up in stores July first. All right, and our last uh, bit of uh, pop culture news. I'm going to throw this to Daryl because he's our <laughs> expert in, uh, um, you know, pop music. So yes. Go ahead, Daryl. I am a <laughs> pop music fiend. This week I was at work and just working hard, cruising Twitter, and realized that the hashtag Megatron was trending on Facebook. And not just trending, but trending number one. And I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? So I clicked on it, and I realized that uh, pop sensation Nikki Min Edge uh, had started using the hashtag uh, Megatron to... Jeremy, we, we need that wrong buzzer sound. What? Oh, I don't think I have it. I'll give him this. <laughs> <laughs> we, need the, we need the wrong buzzer for you butchering that name. <laughs> what? It's Nikki. <laughs> yeah, I'm bringing my old soundboard. I think I got it. There you go. It's not Nicki Min Minaj. Go ahead, Daryl. Continue with the story. <laughs> anyway, she started using the name Megatron. Basically, changed her Twitter name to Megatron. We have no idea what this is about. From what we can tell, it seems to be a title of her new album which apparently is dropping today so by this recording we will all know what it's about uh transformers community saw this i wasn't just the only one and has just been having a field day with uh tweeting and, and doing all this Nicki Min, uh, minaj stuff and, and kind of relating it back to transformers and uh and i definitely got in on the fun as well so I don't know, guys. Uh, first of all, have you heard of, of Nicki Minaj? I've seen the name. Yes, I've heard of Nicki Minaj. Yes. <laughs> I know one of her songs. I've never heard of that <laughs> pronunciation. Okay. She's popular? <laughs> yes. She's quite a hit with the youngins, the young people. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I'd never heard of this Nicki Min AJ. Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm just wondering... Was there a deal with Hasbro? Because <laughs> it's definitely a trademark term. <laughs> well, you know, there, there's no other common use of the word Megatron. Right. So we did have a right. quick discussion about this, and that that Megatron is a character name, and that if if she is using this as something else, as like I mentioned, a call to a call to action, or as a uh, an album name, then she might be able to get away with it. You know, we joked about it in the intro to the show. But the name Megatron is synonymous with Transformers. The fact that she started using this this week has simply destroyed all Transformers credibility. This is now her word, you know. I mean, it, it was one thing for Calvin Johnson to use the word, you know, in football. That wasn't really – he wasn't putting out any product. And then Hasbro was like, hey, we're going to put out a Megatron figure with a football, you know, you know, with like his colors or something like that. Mm -hmm. They got on board with that. I don't know if they would really want to tie in with, with this at all. Cause football kind of plays into the target 
demographics of Transformers. I don't really see Nicki Minaj, so I don't know. Hmm. It's a new demographic, <laughs> bringing hmm. in new Transformers fans who are Nicki Minaj fans. Is it like that time or that, that oh, wait. BlackBerry sponsored wait. the Kardashians and gave them all Blackberries? That worked out really well. And now BlackBerry is the number one phone in the world, right? <laughs> yep. Oh, wait. If, <laughs> if it is a tr- any Transformers related music, maybe we'll play a, a few seconds before we get, you know, sh- a copyright claim or something. <laughs> I highly doubt it. We're old men here. It's okay. We, we are. <laughs> That's all I found about this, and I thought it was funny because the, the the week kind of and it literally is still a, a high trending topic, but it's still um, and and I I honestly think that when this episode drops, it will once again be a trending name on on Twitter because it will be popular again. But Charles, when you make the post, make sure you use the hashtag Megatron. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> will do. <laughs> All right, uh, let's finish up the show with convention news. All right, uh, let's kind of palate cleanser here. We have TFCon DC information. Tickets are now on sale. Go to tfcon.com. These are likely gone, but the premium weekend pass limited to 100 people is $100. The standard weekend pass is $50. The deluxe Saturday pass that is... um, Early admission on Saturday, but it's Saturday only. $35 in advance, $40 at the door. General admission Saturday is $25. General admission Sunday is $20. Kids between 5 and 12 are $5 each day. There's no charge for kids under 5. Uh, customizing class is $80, and shirt is $25. So, I mean, pretty consistent prices here. Um, I am really hoping to go to TFCon DC. I haven't nailed it down yet specifically but um i would really like to to go and see um people like number one derek who i know is just you know in the neighborhood there um i'm sure there's other people on the west coast that i'd like to see uh, or so the east coast not the west coast um so hopefully that can happen um charles you said you are going to try to make it work as well so yeah it's a short drive for me so i i was i was really disappointed i couldn't make it last time so I'd I'd like to try and see if I can get down there. Yes, the next convention news we have is uh, TF Nation 2019 has announced that John McRae is going to be attending. His role was um, he worked on Titans Transformer comics where he provided artwork for four of the animated comics that they released. He also worked on the How to Draw Transformers sections of the comic. And he's also going to be doing work on the new Death Said series where he'll be having some cover art uh, along Nick with Nick Roach. So um, not a lot of Transformers work, but, you know, anime is a fun show. And I, I'm not sure how those comics, I haven't read those comics myself, but you know, I'm sure being UK comics, he's probably got a lot of people that are excited to see him, so... He will have a panel, and I'm sure he's going to be, you know, doing normal things like signings and stuff. So, be sure to to check him out if you're going to TF Nation. And that is convention news. All right, and that will do it for this episode of Transmissions Alt Mode. Thanks everyone for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Later. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week. You're on mute, Daryl. So I was. Um, Mike, don't listen to anything that uh, was going on before. Um, <laughs> <laughs>